of February 2020. When I saw the call, my mom's car was like, ah, why is my mom calling me this early? So I just spoke with them, not quite, maybe the previous day or two days back. When I was even telling my dad that he's due for checkup, he was like, ah, that he's strong. He's not going anywhere, that we should just leave him alone. So when my mother announced the breaking news, that your father is gone, no, tell your siblings. In fact, the voice is still ringing a bell. Well, she was shouting, who will I stay with, you know? For some seconds, I did not even know what I was doing. My phone fell out of my hand. Thank God for my husband, because he was around. The rest is history. That is it, too. It was as if the whole world came crumbling on us. But what do we do? is the ultimate price everybody must pay. Days roll into weeks, weeks into months, and here we are, one year gone. We did not bury him immediately because of the COVID restriction, and for the fact that we wanted to give him a very befitting burial. She was, he was committed to Mother Earth in August 2020. We have this consolation because my father lived a very good life. He left a legacy for us. And before his demise, he already fashioned us the way we should do our things. We should take a good step, follow the right way, and we should be close to our God. That has kept us going, and kept the family moving. Apart from the fact that he left a very big vacuum. Like me as a civil servant, any time I have any problem in the office, I always run to him because he was my mentor. He would tell you how to go about it, and he always worked for me. And now when you remember you want to go home, my father is no more there. In fact, it's a very big blow on all of us. But the only thing that, like I said before, that is concerning us that he lived a very good life, and we are trying to emulate him. The only prayer we have is that God will keep on I mean, our prayer as a family is that God will give us the grace to continue to live this good life that our Father has shown us so that we will not disappoint Him and that God Almighty will continue to keep Him in His bosom for Him to continue to rest in perfect peace. Adieu, Papa. Adieu, Sir. Adieu, as I finally call you. May you go not to rest in peace until we meet again, never to part anymore. Never tell well, how emptiness feels until you lose someone close to you. You can never tell what confusion is and loneliness is until someone goes away from you that you know you're not going to speak to again 
talk to again call again I haven't called my dad for a year now because he's gone let us learn to utilize every moment we have with people that we love so they don't go away from us and then we we'll regret hello everyone welcome to the chief family today is not our regular video that we normally make today is a very special day in my life the mother of the cheese today was the 8th of august was the day my dad was committed to the mother and so i set out today to to celebrate my dad to remember him first of all my dad passed on on the 1st of february 2020 and after his death it was the pandemic so i was unable to travel and i mourned my dad myself with the children with no friend no family so you can imagine how hard it was so i haven't been able to talk about it until today and he was buried in august so the his last day on earth is the day i chose to celebrate him to talk about it my dad was a very good man very intelligent and smart he was a, a teacher a sports teacher and he was that person that he will always be quiet. He will give you a very long time to change your ways. He's not somebody that will talk anyhow. But when he make a decision, he stick to it. He will never change it. He was that kind of person. He was such a good man. He loved God till his death. So let me tell you how my dad died. He didn't die in his sleep. He was not sick. On that fateful day, which was 8th of January, I came back from work. My mind was just on him. I was like, oh, I'm going to call my dad. And then one thing led to another, I forgot. I slept off and I woke up around 3 a.m. And I said, oh my God, I was going to call my dad. I will call him in the morning. I didn't know that his mind was on me that he's going to go, he's going to go. The next morning, exactly 6 a.m. here, which was 7 a.m., was when my dad passed on. My, on the 1st of February, which was the next day, I was still asleep at 6 a.m. I went to use the bathroom. As I came out, I saw someone walking down the stairs. And I thought it was nothing. And when I look, I ran to the stairs, looked down. And I saw that a very big light went through the door. I ran back inside. I said to myself, my dad is gone. And I said, I told myself, shut up. Why are you talking like that? Within five or ten minutes, I made that comment. My phone started ringing. It was my sister in Nigeria that was calling me. My sister who would nom not normally call me very early on a Saturday because she knows that my Saturdays I like to rest. I refused to pick the call and I said, Nobody is going to tell me about the news now. I want more sleep. I went back. And when I woke up around 8, and I saw a message on our family chat, our dad is gone. I said to myself, I knew it. He was here. I didn't feel like saying anything. I just, I was the one consoling everybody. 
I was the one talking to everybody, saying it is fine, don't worry, dad was old, this and this and that. But later that night, I could not sleep. I literally was doing my cry in silence. I would cry the whole night, till the next day, in the, during the day I would be fine. In the night I would be fine. I didn't know that I was going through depression also after hearing the news. So, what happened to my dad? What killed him? It was his time to go. His death has taught us a lot of lessons as a family, as an individual, as a person. We have learned a lot from my dad. That faithful day, 5 a.m., when my mom used to wake him up and say, let's go for morning prayers. My dad, my mom went to wake him up. He told my mom, you can go to, the, to church, I'm coming. My mom was in the church. My dad woke up, went and had his bath, wear his clothes, and came and sat down in the sitting room. I said, they're shouting, go and call my wife for me. Go and call my wife for me. It's my time to go. It is my time to go. And the people in the house, and there's a lady that looked after them and said, where are you going? It is my time to go. It is my time to go. And they sent someone to go and call my mom. By the time my mom rushed to, as far as my mom got into the house, my dad passed away. At this point, I want us to observe one minute silence. away I didn't take it to be anything because he was coming to me we we're talking like he was still staying here standing here we talk and all this and that it was really nothing so until we fixed the funeral date I couldn't go to Nigeria because of COVID and it was shifted and then the it finally came again the day before the final funeral I didn't sleep I will sit down, I will get up, I will lie down. My head was blank. I don't know how I'm going to express this. But I wasn't thinking about anything. But I, myself was not inside me. So very early in the morning, I went downstairs to sit down. I was not interested in doing anything. I just sat down. Because I was expecting pictures, I wanted videos, I wanted this. I wanted to see what was going on. My mind was there. But just as they sent me the video when they were carrying the coffin, I screamed this whole house down. I was crying. That was when it was done on me that, well, this is the last time you will see him. <laughs> crying the whole cry. I can say that was the only time I literally honestly cried cry out even though I have been crying but after the funeral I went through a distressing time I was depressed I was hiding away from the public even though I was still coming on YouTube laughing it was not easy and I was thinking that I was sick until the doctor said, no, you're not sick, you are depressed. We have to give you this, you have to start coming out to look at people, to look around. But at the end of the day, by the help of God, 
I went through everything. My the purpose of me saying this here is if I had called my dad that night, I would have been one of the people that spoke to him last. But I didn't call him. I kept having someone something to say. Oh, I was doing this. I forgot. Always listen to your spirit, man. When the spirit speaks, always obey. Since my dad died, I haven't said rest in peace because I always felt his presence everywhere I go. He's always with me. He's always talking to me. He's always telling me this. He's always trying to tell me this. He's always trying to tell me this. And I am so glad that he raised a queen in me. I'm proud to say that my dad raised me well. The kind heart that he had, he transferred to all of us, all his children. My dad has eight, he had nine children, one passed away. So he had four boys, four girls. So now I'm going to let you listen to some of my brothers who have sent a video to remember this day. Before I do that, I'm going to let Christabel. Christabel met my dad and they were such a good friend. I'm going to let Christabel say something about granddad. Grandpa was a very kind person. I remember when I went to Nigeria, he was always telling me he was saying all sorts of nice things to me. We were always together. He was a very warm-hearted person. Very kind and very nice. He liked me a lot. I'll miss it when I, when I go to Nigeria because if I go, he won't be there anymore. Like he used to be. It was just like uh, a dream on that sat Saturday when the news broke that uh, my father is late. Precisely it was on 1st February 2020 that day remains green in my heart. It just came in on the for the first five minutes, I think my whole head and my heart was black. I felt a great sense of loss. Because what I've found out is that whether they are old, very, very old or not, when you lose the source of your life, the source person that brought you into this world, you feel that great sense of loss. That was what really happened that day. For the course of five days, it was still like a dream, but uh, it began to dawn on all of us. But the reality, that was when the planning, the burial plans, we started with it. We started to plan this, go to mortuary, go to this, talk about the village people and the rest of it. I can sadly say that uh, yes, time actually flies. But no matter how fast it flies, the death of our beloved dad still remains green in our hearts. I want to thank God that uh, to the best of our ability we were able to give him what we can call and define as a befitting burial. We, we still miss him out today but we have a consolation. The consolation is that uh, before he left us he had already planted in us just like what 
they said in the Bible, he will show a child the way he, sh- he or she should live mm-hmm. and he will not depart. He had already shown us the path. The way he, sh- he or she should live and he will not depart. He had already shown us the path that we should follow. He had already trained so many of us to even face a turbulent world. Uh, we want to thank God that he gave him the wisdom and grace to really bring us up the way he did in the society in the village he was honored he was respected some of us can't even fit into his shoes we are praying that uh, God will continue to rest his soul and he continue to give us the grace to do our best to even live like him it's just like uh, yesterday but uh, just like what i said before time flies the 28th of uh, this month we make it exactly one year he was buried those memories are like none he will not be forgotten we pray that God will continue to give us the grace to continue to live the way he, he, our Father, had taught us. Keep up with the discipline. Keep up with the good work. Keep up with all the good things he advocated for and he lived for so that we will not depart from the sight of God and from the good things that we are supposed to be doing. Uh, as we remember him, may God uh, continue to give us the grace to love ourselves, to be together, to be together as family, work together as family, keep on uh, making the family move forward. We pray that uh, even as he has left us physically, we know he is still seeing us spiritually. May his spiritual help continue to aid us to be together, to work harder, keep us spiritually and physically strong. We pray that his soul will continue to rest in peace. We love him, God. We love you and we miss you. Okay, what it means to lose a father, like every other person, is an awful experience. Experience no one wish to experience, but it is a reality. It is something that everyone will have to experience. So it's been hard, it's been tough for me as a person, as a last born. Who wish that his dad be there to enjoy him as his son, which is one of the things he was not able to enjoy so much from me. I want to thank God for everything. I want to say he's been good. Losing him has made me to understand that there's something that comes after this world. He has gone to be with his creator. I know that one day I also go to be with my creator. So it has helped me to have a second thought about life, about how I live my life. But one great thing I would say I appreciate about him is he brought me up to be a great person, to be a good man, and he had his own principles. He was known for something, and he was known for peace. So that also helped me to make my own decision as a man that this is what I want to be known for when I leave this world. So I want to thank God for everything. But like you that person, it's a painful thing to lose a loved one. I love him so much. But in the aspect of advice, and at some point, I always call him to say, okay, this is what is bothering me, this is what I feel about this and this. And he was always there to advise me to put me through in the right direction. But like we always know, since he is gone, God will also raise somebody else that will put us through, that will be there for us to take care of us and direct us in all our decisions. So, I want to say I miss him. I'll continue to miss him, but 
I will be eternally grateful to God for making me have such a father who was a role model to a lot of persons, not just his children, but to a lot of persons around him. So I'm a very proud man having a father like that and in my next world I wish to have him as my father. But if you ask me for one wish I want, I will tell you I want to always see him in my dream because I know in him physical I will not be able to see him again. I want to always see him in my dream because I know in my dreams he will also talk to me, also direct me on what and what I'm supposed to do. When I have difficulties, he can also talk to me on decisions to take to come out of it. But I want to thank God for everything. In one year, a very tough one year. But I know as time goes on, it will get better. And the reason why God took him from us will be revealed to all of us. So we thank God for everything. He said in all things, to give thanks to God. So thank God for everything. Thank God for taking him from us. And thank God for giving him to us as our father. I know none of his children will say they're not proud of him. All of us are proud of him. And we will not say he used to be our father. We will continue to say he's our father because up to tomorrow he will continue to be our father because he was there for us when we get to be. So that is what I feel about this for And I continue to pray that God we rest his soul in his bosom. So with this I say, may souls of all the faithful departed, may soul of Sir Patrick Colum rest in peace. Amen. I am purposely making this film at the sunset, I remembering Sir Patrick Cologo as the sun set in his life one year ago. As Sir Patrick Cologo actually one of the old men who have deep faith in God. He actually influenced me deeply also as a young priest. I benefited immensely from his goodwill. Whenever I visited the upper hill after suffering for hours to reach the people carrying my mask box on their head, he provided the room on board. He gave me where to take my bath and then had a chance to have a good meal. Then Chinere was the choir mistress, and uh, not only that, she has always been a good cook. And uh, whenever I'm passing by the roads or through the side, it was a joy to visit Sir Patrick Oliver. As the sun set one year ago in his life, Papa, be assured that you are deeply missed by people like Fadoji who actually wish that, or who believe strongly that you are in heaven. Your good works, Papa, uh, have also gone along with you. May the good Lord himself, who has also given all of us the chance to be his children, reward you with good things. Hello, Papa. We love you. Uh, keep praying for us. Give us good place when you when we come to join the Lord. Tell Jesus we love him. So, I thank you all for coming out this evening to celebrate the life of my dad, to remember him. I ask you to continue to pray for him and the faithful departed. And I know that he's smiling at us from heaven. Today mark a very special day. I will always remember and I will keep everybody informed while going through this journey because losing someone is quite a lot of things to deal with. And I'm going to do this every year until that I'm not able to do it. But I'm going to remember this day, 28th of August every year to celebrate his passing his last day on earth i thank god that we are still here and we have learned something good from him so his legacy lives on so it's up to us we that are still here to be able to learn if we want to be good we can be good and I know, and I think our generation think everything is easy and simple. 
it is quite interesting to see a man of that kind knowing when he wants to die knowing that I am going I am leaving the earth and I celebrate him as you do one I celebrate you my dad was a great man and I have missed him so much I don't even remember of going to Nigeria even though I still have my mom I just thought because I'm not sure how I'm going to it is up to us living now to live a good life so that we could be remembered of our good works I love you dad I'm never gonna say rest in peace I'm going to tell you to continue to enjoy heaven until we meet to part no more I love you dad I will always love you but as you know part of me has gone and the life has never been easy it has never ever and will never remain the same